Hello everyone, Ryan here with Product Impressions, and today we are going to be taking a look at a Chefman Air Fryer uh, Turbo Fry. Uh, I guess this is uh, just something I've seen advertised a fair amount and thought that I would check it out. Always looking for new ways of cooking vegetables and keeping things interesting. Uh, so, uh, it does look like you can cook vegetables on here. It does have a 3.5 liter or 15 cup capacity. So, uh, yeah, never used an air fryer before, so it'll be interesting to check out. All right, it's a large enough box that it looks like I'm going to have to do this on the floor. So, here we go. Uh, looks like pretty standard paperwork, quick start guide, uh, some kind of coupon for your next purchase which I don't know if that really applies to small appliances, but whatever, we'll take a look at it. All right. There we go. Here we have it. Let me move that out of the way. So there we have the Chefman Air Fryer. I would say it's a uh, nice smooth plastic. Nothing uh, exceptional, but it's not like it's going to stand out as uh, anything, you know, unusual to see in the kitchen. Uh, looks like we have some manner of lid on the top here. Maybe that's to uh, vent air pressure or something. On the front, it looks like we have separate knobs for temperature and time. That feels much nicer. Yeah, you can tell it's got a nice uh, circularly brushed effect. So, all right, let's uh, get this thing set up and see how it works. All right, after a couple weeks of use with this uh, Chefman air fryer, let's kind of run through what I've done. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm not much of a foodie. I don't usually take pictures of my food, so I forgot for the first couple of things that I made, which included uh, some Brussels sprouts with crumbled bacon and Parmesan on top, and then also uh, some sweet potato fries. Main things that I learned after making those were that uh, the Brussels sprouts, things that are kind of have a rounded shape to them, essentially, will work very nicely in here. You you know, toss them in oil, put them in the basket, shake them around halfway through, and they're good to go. The sweet potato fries were a little bit more difficult uh, because they end up making long flat surfaces that are coated in oil. And if you just dump a bunch of them in there, anything that is pressed together like this, flat side on flat side, the air doesn't get in and it doesn't cook. Um, so that's one thing to be aware of when you're using something like this, you need to actually at least have things be kind of at an angle to each other to make sure that everything is actually going to cook. When you're using uh, pre-made foods like chicken nuggets, tenders, things like that, I find this to be much easier than a toaster oven. Uh, to get things as crisp as I usually like in a toaster oven, I need to put them in for uh, the chicken tenders that I make for about eight to ten minutes on one side, flip it over, another eight to ten minutes, and then things are nicely cooked. Um, this one, uh, about seven minutes total. So put it in for a few minutes, turn them over a few more minutes, and you're good to go. Uh, as far as the amount of food that you can get in there, there's definitely <clears throat> enough that you can get in for, you know, feeding one or two people. Just kind of as an example. You can see it is about eight and a half inches across, so that gives you a bit of an idea how much uh, food you might be able to fit in there. Uh, when you pull this out, whoops. <laughs> uh, when you pull this out, it does stop the heating element, so you're not gonna, you know, have to worry about uh, it, uh, anything getting in there and catching fire unless you pull this out and something goes in like immediately. Um, <clears throat> let me. That was definitely not planned. Uh, everything that is in here is a non-stick material, so cleaning it out is fairly easy. It doesn't take all that much to clean. Uh, pretty much just wait until it cools down. Safety first. 
uh, wait until it cools down, and then you can pop out that grate, as you saw, pretty easily. Uh, just kind of wipe everything down with a little bit of soapy water, and you're good to go. Just wipe it down, dry it off, and you're good. Yeah. Uh, this thing will be on whenever it's plugged in. There is no on-off switch, so probably best practice is good to unplug it when it's not in use. You will know if it is on by a couple of LED lights on the front here. There will be a blue one that comes on when it's just plugged in, and a red one when the heating element is engaged. Uh, on the back, you do have a vent. Um, I would say be careful with what you put this near. You don't want it to be near any food that is going to melt, uh, because the air coming out the back will be hot. Um, yeah, otherwise the use could not be much easier. You have the outer dial here, which controls the temperature. You can see there it's at 350, which was for the chicken tenders. Pretty much everything else that I made out of the recipe book was at the 400 degree range. And then you just turn the inner dial, this uh, kind of brushed metal one, uh, that tells that sets the timer on it. And you can see there are numbers around there to go all the way up to about 60 minutes. So I have no idea what you would want to cook that long, but it's possible. All right. Hopefully this review has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I'm planning on keeping this and continuing to use it. So uh, if you have any questions on it, uh, write them in the comments and I'll try to respond. And otherwise, like, share, subscribe, usual YouTube stuff. Thank you very much.